start from the beginning. Okay, so uh, we, we're starting a new chapter in the Bible. We're going to start with the books, book of Acts on Friday. Uh, oh. So that's what we'll be studying. And those that were in class last week actually oh, a chapter um, in the book of Acts. So if you want, if you have a desire to teach, you can uh, see me and I'll give you a chapter so that you can teach. This is a training center. So what better way to be trained than um, have a study to present to us? So um, it'll be exciting to, to see you guys teach. Give me a break. <laughs> mm -hmm. We are having a family fun day. Um, we do this every year. So we have secured the valley again. It has a pool. Um, and we bar we can barbecue, but we usually just bring food, bring your friends, bring your family, uh, save that date, July 13th. And so, uh, we just solidified that date today. So Sharon will be in contact with you to, um, help out, bring things, yada, yada, yada. It's usually potluck. And then we, the ministry brings whatever Sharon tells me to bring. It's usually the meat or whatever. So. So as we move on to cycles, we are talking about laziness and procrastinating, which um, I didn't really talk too much about late and rushed, feeling rushed. I really focused on laziness and procrastination are the two cycles or, or the cycle that we will discuss. Um, and so, again, for those who haven't heard, it's two cycles that we cover, one each week. The first week, we do this death cycle, talking about your triggers, strong home traps, and training that you've done, and how we can break through. You have to make a choice to get out of the cycle. And then week two, we talk about the life cycle, which starts with salvation, I'm really hitting a lot on salvation because people are questioning their salvation. So I spend a lot of time building on the starting point of our salvation and trusting that and then self-discipline and then spiritual discipline. So uh, as we talked before about strongholds, we have two strongholds. One is life-giving and the other one's not. Um, and so every cycle has a stronghold that we have to break out of. So knowing what those strongholds are will help you live. Um, and then of course, when you break out, once you get in the life cycle, you can have a breakthrough, but as long as you are in the death cycle, you are broke down. And so those are the, th the three areas that we're talking about uh, walking through. I really like this sloth in this little picture here. I'm not lazy. I'm on power saving mode. Uh, one thing about being lazy is you can make so many excuses why you're lazy. Um, Proverbs six and nine says, but you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? Will you, when will you wake up? Um, we in the church really do need to wake up, wake up to what's happening in the world, wake up to our issues that we're having in life so that we can begin to to live and and not die so when you talk about laziness and procrastination you're talking about this in the bible there are several texts and proverbs uh, about your behavior and then the outcome of that behavior and so the first one that you, behavior that you have if you are lazy or a procrastinator is that you set your pace based on people. Uh, you let people determine what you do or don't do. Um, your behavior as a sluggard is if, if someone motivates you, okay, you'll do it. But if not, you're just as content sitting around eating a bag of bonbons and watching TV and not really getting anything done. Um, lazy people and sluggards, they don't prepare for anything. Um, and since you don't prepare for anything, you aren't prepared for anything. So it's kind of a self-fulfilling cycle um, for people that are sluggards, people that procrastinate. Um, the other behavior that you have is that you're never pleased with anything. Nothing pleases you. 
Um, everyone else around you has smiling and happy, but when you're a procrastinator and you're lazy, uh, nothing's quite right. It's, it's always almost right. You're almost happy. You almost, almost, almost. And that always leads to your sorrow. The outcome or the rewards of being a sluggard is really your destruction. I like this text. It says, he that separates from the law through discipline is wise man, um, um, is a brother of Satan, um, whose name is Ap Ap Apollon, who is a waster and destroyer, a man that is slothful spirit through profess through, uh, through a prof uh, professor of religion and has a place in the house of God is a brother to him is a waster and a and a persecutor of it. So if you're a time waster, this is uh, Proverbs eighteen nineteen says that you are like a destroyer, you're wasting, you are partnering with people that would violate, um, violate the things of God because God has given us purpose. He's given us meaning. And while you're sitting around not doing anything, you're wasting time is wasting the things that God has given you um, because you're sitting down on your laurels. And finally, Proverbs 27, 17 says that, um, he's going to punish your behavior. So you think you're getting away by being lazy? Uh, God has the final say on, on what that looks like. So Nehemiah uh, 5 and, and um, 13 is kind of a text that I use. I, I saw this lap um, when I was thinking about laziness and um procrastination. What makes us take this lap? And so also I, I, I shook my lap and said, so God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performs not his promise. Even thus be he shaken out and empty. And all the congregation said, amen, praise God. Um, and the people did according to the promise. So what does this mean? When you in, in Israel, when you had this stuff on the lap and you shake it out, you took you you kind of throw it away. What they're liking it to is a person that's lazy and don't don't perform what he says he's going to do. God is going to shake you out like dust on your on your lap. You're just going to be kind of dusted away. That's one of the rewards of being lazy. When you say you're going to do something and you procrastinate or you're lazy about it, you don't perform what you promise, there's going to be a shaking that's going to happen. You think you're just not doing a, a, an assignment, but what you're actually doing is breaking a word of something that you said that you will, will do. And more importantly, it's an assignment that God's given you that you are falling short on your labor and part of the kingdom's not getting built because of your laziness. So this verse really is a curse, curses the people if they don't do what they say they're going to do. Um, we should be mindful that our laziness has a price. So this is the lap that I saw. The first part of the lap is laziness, and then it comes down to avoidance, and then avoidance leads to procrastination. And you go into this avoidance, procrastination, lazy, avoid, and it's just this endless infinity loop that you continue to go around and get nothing done. Laziness is avoidance of duties rooted in the heart of selfishness. That's how come you're in the death cycle because laziness is what? I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I don't want to. I'll do it tomorrow. All of those sentences starts with I. Laziness is selfish. The heart of a lazy person is selfishness. Um, you can say it's a whole bunch of other things, but it's 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 about you. Uh, procrastination, on the other hand, is the act of unnecessarily and voluntarily delaying or postponing something despite knowing that doing so will have a negative consequence. So laziness is this, you just don't want to do it. Procrastination is, I'll wait to do it. Um, and so there is a form of laziness embedded in procrastination. So 
many of the things that I, I'll talk about is procrastination because um, that's part of it, but you can be lazy and not procrastinate and you can be pro a procrastinator and not be lazy. But surely one of those laps that you take is because we want to avoid doing what we know we're supposed to do. Many people in the ministry of God take this lap of laziness, avoidance and procrastination because they're not ready yet. I'm not worthy of this. I, I need to do this. You hear that again? It's all about I. Uh, I'm not ready. Uh, even in the things of God, we take this lap and it's an infinite loop. It never gets done. You never walk in your calling. You never witness to someone. You, you never get around to it because there's always a reason why you don't. Um, laziness causes us to avoid responsibility which leads to procrastination. That's what this model is looking like. Um, because you want to avoid what you know you're supposed to do, that avoidance causes the procrastination. So this is kind of procrastination involves delaying unnecessarily, whereas laziness involves being reluctant to exert the effort. I like this little cat. He's kind of breathing, sitting on the couch. I mean, he's just too lazy to even use the remote control to turn the TV. Um, that's pretty lazy. Uh, the difference between laziness and procrastination is based on your intention, the instance, and your initiative. Intentionality is about willingness to work. Your instance is about the time to work. And your initiative is about your internal motivation to work. Um, and so you can see here in this graph, in this chart, intentionality for laziness, you're unwilling to move. For your intentionality for procrastination, you'll move, but you'll be delayed. And we will see later on that delay is leads to your denial. <laughs> um, you know, we say God's delay is not his denial, but our delay is our denial. And so it's kind of a different, a different mindset you have to understand if you're a procrastinator, that when because you're delayed, you will be denied access. And we'll see that using the example of the 10 uh, virgins. Um, instance, uh, this has to do with time. Your instance, if you're lazy, is you continue to avoid things. You don't feel like picking up your house. So your house gets more junky, more junky. You don't feel like doing this. So it just continues to pile up. It's continual avoidance, it's laziness. However, procrastination is, I'll postpone until later. So not only do you have a mindset of delay, but you also wanna wait. You wanna wait as if tomorrow will be a better day. Um, a lot of things procrastinators say is, I work well under pressure. That's an excuse. Um, you, you know, working under pressure is stress and stress has an impact on our body, but that is an excuse to procrastinate as use. And it sounds really good. I'm good under pressure. Well, why, why work under pressure? That doesn't make it better. And then your initiative, not willing to work. Lazy people really don't want to work. Uh, procrastinators, they have a desire to work, but they say they can't work. They can't for, for other reasons. The thing about procrastinator is you procrastinate on tasks that you really don't want to do. That's really the bottom line. That's why it's selfishness because procrastination says, oh, somebody else can do that work. I don't want to do it. So I'll just hold off um, on doing that, that work. So here's the test for you. Are you lazy? Lazy people always have a reason for why they they can't, won't, or shouldn't do something. Don't raise your hand if you mark 100% on your test. Lazy people make up excuses to defend their lack of action and avoid or neglect responsibility. Lazy people suffer from lack of confidence and commitment. Lazy people spend too much time on social media, and social platforms. Lazy people don't go the extra mile. They just do just what it takes to get over. Lazy people are master procrastinators and lazy people most 
common excuses are due to fear of failure, change, fear of change, challenging situations, and, and uh, fear of responsibility. So fear, fear is the reason why people can be lazy. If they do it, that means that, and they fail, that means that that's gonna make them look bad. Um, if it's challenging and they don't rise to the occasion, that'll make them look bad. Again, the motivation for laziness is, is about you. It's not about helping people. It's not about doing your fair share. Laziness is totally about you. You might think, oh, well, it's an energy thing. Um, well, you're not even motivated to, to have energy. And so it's still about you. That's why this is part of the death cycle. How what did you score on that? Did you score 100? Did you score 10? Did you have none of them? Well, good, you're not lazy. But what about a procrastinator? Procrastinate, uh, procrastinators lack assertiveness and skill. So they're not gonna be a go-getter. Uh, they, they might not have the skill to do it. So like the lazy person, they, uh, if they lack the skills, they, they won't want to do it because they feel like they won't be able to finish the work. And so they procrastinate. Why? Because it's work that they don't really want to do in the first place because they don't feel qualified to do it. Procrastinators are also fearful. So what do they do? Procrastinators, they self-sabotage. How do they self-sabotage? Self By setting unreasonable high goals and expectations um, and they're perfectionists. And so procrastinators don't start because if they start, it has to be perfect. And so they continue to go around this loop because, oh, it's not right yet. It's not right. And they sabotage their own success because they never get anything done. Why? Because it's not perfect. It's a never ending cycle. These are strongholds that we have to understand that the enemy is using us to not walk in the things of God. Procrastinators are lazy and have an unhealthy lifestyle. Um, they may um, eat the wrong things. They, stay, they, they don't sleep well um, uh, because they, they want to delay all the time. They might burn the midnight oil, they might say. And they're burning the midnight oil because they waited to the last minute, not because they just like staying up late at night. And then when you're, when you're not rested, your mind does not work to its fullest potential. And so your outcome won't be good, which feeds into your perfectionism, which feeds into self-sabotage. Um, procrastinators won't, won't do work they don't like or is boring. Um, there's many times that you might do thing that's boring. It's boring to clean the tub, but... So what? It's boring. Your tub needs to be clean because if not, it looks kind of disgusting in your house. Who wants to take a bath in a dirty tub? Procrastinators. Procrastinators won't be involved with people they don't like. Why? Because it's all about them. I don't want to work with this person. They, they'll say, they're too lazy. Well, you're a procrastinator. So, you know, you're no better than the person that you don't like for whatever reason you don't like them. Um, they're not going to be motivated to, to come alongside someone they don't like. Why? Because it's all about them. Procrastinators are not motivated when they have low, uh, when they are low on energy or irritated. So there you go. It's all about them again. I'm too tired. So I'll just wait to do it. Or I'm irritated or I'm mad. I'll wait and do that tomorrow. Well, it shouldn't matter if you're mad or irritated. If you gave your word that you were going to do something, do it. So what? You're mad. Do it mad. Just do it. <laughs> Procrastinators are not motivated if they think someone else should do the task. Ugh, that's really hard where uh, somebody else should be doing this. Why are they asking me to do it? And they drag their feet because they're mad about doing work that they believe someone else should do. But if we are working together and thinking about teamwork, who cares whose task it is? Just get it done because it was asked of you to get it done. So don't procrastinate. Procrastinators suffer from fake passion. And um, what is that supposed? I think that's supposed to be poor, <laughs> poor time and self-management. Um, we have to be able to manage ourselves, manage our time 
manage our um, abilities and the things that we're doing. And I give you some ways, if you're a procrastinator, how you can actually work your way out of procrastination little by little so that you can become an active person and get and break out of the cycle. So what is this cycle? The cycle again starts with self-focused. It's you're focused on self and then it's triggered by fear, which runs into the stronghold, which sets you into the trap of the lap. What is the lap trap? Laziness, avoidance, and uh, uh, procrastination. So your mental stronghold will force you into the trap of being lazy because of your fear, uh, you, your avoidance strategy and procrastination. So you go into this trap. And then even if you somehow wake up enough to do the work, you do it because you, you're doing it for other people. You're not doing it because you said that you would do it. You're doing it as a favor of men. And then that spiritual discipline goes right back into yourself which triggers another fear, which takes you into your stronghold. You take another lap. And remember, this is a stronghold within a stronghold. You're going this way. As soon as you do lap, you're going this way. So you're trapped in this cycle and it doesn't want to let you out. So this is how the cycle works in with words. First thing that happens is denial. You make a statement You with a statement. You're faced with a test. We absolutely don't want to tackle. We become self-focused and say, I'll do it later. So that's the first step in this downward spiral. And then dread happens. You have fear. As the deadline approaches, fear is triggered, which triggers that stronghold. Um, we worry about the work effort, the potential of failure. We think about the task size. We become paralyzed. And then we go take some laps, which is our desire, our motivation. Our motivation is laziness, avoidance, and uh, procrastination. We convince ourselves that we can conquer this task by our own actions. It's self-focused for men or gain favor with God. So we declare, I can do this. I can do this myself. I can do it. And then you have this deception that happens. You accept that you have to get this work done. And we come to terms with the reality and we acknowledge that the task won't be completed by itself. So you accept the fate, you buckle down and you begin to do the work um, under pressure just to get it done. And then the task comes again. And guess what happens? You become self-focused for the next task given. And we enter into the cycle again, always fighting this cycle of denial, dread, desire, deception. Do it again, repeat. That is how procrastination stays in a cycle of death. Any questions on the cycle? Any recognitions on the cycle? Well, go ahead, ma'am. I don't know your name. Mako Show. You go first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go first. I was just going to say, of everything you've taught so far, these are my biggest glitches. <laughs> not nearly as bad as some of them, but I try to blame it on I'm too tired or I get overwhelmed because I do have some things I need to do and it's just overwhelming how I it so I make all kinds of excuses. These are this is wonderful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can we'll give you some ways to break out of this trap so that you can break out and come into the life cycle. Go ahead, Cass. You know, I'm over here like, I'm like hella manifesting while you're talking. Like, <laughs> I am so uncomfortable. I want to shut the video off and hide because all of this is true of me and I hate it. I hate it. I'm over here like my my skin's itching, my hair's all of a sudden, um, I, I recognize that my hair is filling and I feel my shirt all of it. You know what I'm saying? All those little distractions that the enemy likes to throw because it's a manifestation. And um, this is the cycle that is destroying me. Mm. It is, and, and I know it and I'm going to put it on the spot and it, and it wants to hide. It doesn't want to be, it doesn't want the truth, you know, 
it wants to stay in that cycle and and you know the truth sets us free so i i just have to open my mouth and 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 i have to put it on the spot because i want this cycle broken me too i can definitely say that this is one that's me hard for me too um can y'all hear her yes is that amanda yeah yeah it's yeah. hard for me too um and i know that i can't get through it by myself so what I do to help is I tell my close people what my struggles are and what my goals are so that they can hold me accountable for the things that I say that I want to accomplish. I find that to be a lot easier to do. I'm not going to say easier, but a lot more manageable. When I have other people in my corner, not only supporting me, but making me be on top of it. Because I know that if, if it were up to me, I wouldn't be on top of it. So if, you know, for whoever has these problems, definitely, you know, even if you're embarrassed or what have you about whatever your issues are, share them with somebody, someone that you trust, someone that's close to you so that you can have somebody to get through it with you. Okay. Okay. Amen. Judy? I, don't have no I just don't have nobody to, to uh, accountability. But anyway, I had the same problem. I, uh, I, I like to procrastinate, especially the housework, because I go clean people's houses, and then when I come home, I'm, I don't want to do my house. Well, you do realize you just made an excuse. Yes, I do. About not having someone to keep you accountable, because you have all these people. You got Wendy. I mean, you have people to keep you accountable. Accountable doesn't mean they have to be in your face. You can text, you can send emails, you can have phone calls. There's so many different ways okay. with 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 uh, keeping accountable. I know we keep each other accountable in our workout schedule. And we just, we have, well, Paige and I had a goal of working out three times a week, but then went to four. Amanda just bumped it up to five. And so all we do is tell each other every day when we work out and it puts pressure on us to do it because it's not that they'll say, oh, you're a loser. You only worked out three times. It's just that you want to keep your word, like Amanda said, to your Amen. group. And so find a group, find someone and, and be held accountable. Remember, part of laziness and procrastination is not taking the responsibility, avoiding the responsibility. That's part of this um, this cycle, okay? Anyone else? Yeah, I just have one more thing. Like, <clears throat> like, like, you know, school. Like, well, everything in my life. What am I just saying? One thing. Um, <laughs> like, the choice is give up or run. You know, that's kind of like, mm -hmm. well, I don't run anymore. And I'm not... I'm not really one to give up. And so like, <laughs> it's kind of funny that this is the, the cycle. Cause I didn't want to be on the line tonight. I was like, yeah, I won't do it, but I'll, but just, I know it was the Holy spirit. He's like, yes, you are. So here I am. But like, um, that's the options, you know, is like at this point is give up. And that that's just, mm -mm. It, it's not, it's just, I know it's an option, but for me, that's, it's not an option. I have, this has to be fixed. Well, mm -hmm. what other options do you have? And this is a gr group question. She says the option is escape or give up. Can anyone think of any other options? Go through. Very good. What, what about say? go through it? What about dedication? I would say I would say um ask for help. Okay. Ask for help. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's there's other choices. Support. Um support group. Go, go ahead, Judy. What you say? I was gonna say you could have a support group. Mm-hmm. I don't know where she lives, but um, like we're all we're all in God's family. Why can't we support each other? Well, if you're all dealing with ladies and procrastination, I get the one. <laughs> 
We need that. You know, you'll be like, oh, I'll text her. I'll do it tomorrow. I like what Amanda said. So I put to get through it, go through it. <laughs> I yeah. think that's the phrase. You you have to be able to dedicate yourself to what you say you're going to do. Don't let anything hinder your words. Uh, your words have power. And if you don't follow through, your power is taken away. Yes, Des. Um, so something that I have found as I've been working over the last, you know, year and a half of getting out of survival mode is that when I was in survival mode, I was like superwoman because I could do so many. I mean, I wasn't necessarily doing them all well, but I was doing all these things to keep myself busy and to keep myself from really, you know, healing myself. And so it's a weird place to be in for me now to not be in survival mode. And it's hard to do, decipher, am I being lazy or am I just like taking time to rest because I feel lazy sometimes allowing myself to just rest. But I'm really trying to hear if God's not telling me to move yet, like I'm, I'm trying not to move. I'm trying not to just do things without asking him. And so it's hard for me to say, I, like, I feel lazy sometimes. And yes, I am lazy in some ways, for sure. You know, cleaning my house, I have like dirty laundry to do right now. It's a procrastination. There's things. But yeah, that's just been a struggle for me coming out of the zone of doing overdoing. Yeah, there is kind of a calibration that happens when you are in survival mode your brain has like a flood and it's just letting everything in because it's trying to feed that fight, flight, or freeze thing inside of your brain. And you feel like you have to do something. So this past year, you have been denying that. And when you're denying that, that brain is now getting a chance to rest, to close up, to let the right amount of things through your brain so that you can make proper decisions. And so for a person that was always surviving, when you don't do anything, of course you're gonna feel lazy because you feel like you have to do something. Because if I don't do something, I'm gonna die. What? <laughs> and so that transition, which you're going through right now will calibrate. And so that you don't go all the way to one side to laziness or all the way to the other side in survival. It'll come right back into center where you will know the balance. And that's what that's what we're working on towards is giving you that balance. Does that make sense, Des? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so just, just give it more time. And I can definitely say to you, continue to rest. You're okay. Just breathe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so when we, thanks for sharing. When we think about the procrastination cycle in the Bible, Felix was one to procrastinate. He's a portrait. If you look at Acts 24, uh, 30, 20, 23 to 27, sorry, numbers are bad for me. Um, I broke this down into four cycles, but the Life cycle, the cycle of procrastination is you feel anxious and fearful confronting a stressful problem. That's how you're going to start. And then you engage in avoidance, which is your coping mechanism, your coping behavior, uh, which leads to procrastination. And then stress is relieved temporarily, but the problem is still not resolved. So you're just in this place of avoidance. You're like, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. So it kind of lets some pressure off. And then you continue to use avoidance as a coping mechanism in response to the problem. And then it takes you right back into the cycle again. And so this is not only do you have the infinity problem with the lap, laziness, avoidance, and pro uh, um, procrastination, but now within avoidance, you now have a cycle. So you have within the death cycle, two other cycles that you're working through, plus the stronghold cycle in your mind. Do you wonder why it's hard to break procrastination and laziness? 
Do you see all the things that are working against you? The enemy always works in a web to get you to be halted, to be stopped, to not do the things that God has purposed you to do. He is going to do everything in his power to keep you locked down. Okay, you don't procrastinate. So maybe I'll keep them stuck in this avoidance cycle. Okay, you get out the invoices. I, maybe I'll get them stuck in a stronghold of fear because if I can keep them in that stronghold of fear and they believe the lie, they'll never get out. You see how it works? This, this, the cycles have cycles and each cycle is set to destroy you. We've got, and that's why you broke down. That's how come the death cycle makes you break down. So what was Felix's cycle? It says here, and he commanded a, a satyrian to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and he should avoid none of the acquaintances or the minister. So here he was, he had to make a decision. He, did, he, he knew he could make a decision to release him, but what did he do? He avoided his responsibility. So now we come to verses 24 and 25. After certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla the Jewess, he sent Paul and he heard him concerning the faith. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, judgment to come, Felix trembled. There's that fear, that fear that happens with uh, this cycle and answered, go thy way this time. There's the time element when I have convenience season. So I'll do it when I'm convenient. Go away. And when I'm convenient, I'll hear you again. I will call thee. So there's another cycle. First, he kept them in prison and sent them away. He didn't take responsibility. He kept sending them back to listen to him. He says, okay, I'm pretty afraid because I think what this guy is saying is true. And so I'm going to avoid making a decision. Go away for another season. So that's the second cycle. All within this little verse. The third cycle came in verses 24, um, in verse 26. He had hoped also for money would be given him that he might lose him. Therefore, he sent for him often. So it doesn't tell you how often, but that would mean that he sent for him. He didn't make a decision. He sent well for, so he continued to procrastinate. He continued to avoid making that decision. And then finally, here it is, two years later, uh, Festus came along um, into Felix's room and Felix was willing to please the Jew. He left Paul bound. So after two years, this cycle continued and he was relieved from the governor and someone else took his place. So he never finished his assignment. So what this procrastinator says, I can't bear the idea of something. Uh, I don't want, I can't, not today. I just can't. I need to be in control. That's a big one for procrastinators and lazy people. They want to be in control. What the Festus says is because of my convenience. I'll send for you when it's convenient for me. When I'm out of this situation, um, I really need to avoid this. Sometimes we do. We don't like conflict. And so procrastinators will use avoidance. And you see that avoidance has a strategy. And that strategy is really to destroy you. So delayed obedience is the same as disobedience, which is sin. I'm sorry to tell you, you can say, oh, it's delayed obedience. Well, sorry, God, dudes, that's disobedience. God has told you to go into nations or God has told you to go sing or God's told you to go pick up the trash and you're procrastinating from what you've heard. And so you're in disobedience and that's why laziness and procrastination is sin. Because you know what to do is right, but you don't do it because of control, because of, because of, because of. So therefore you're sinning. And you say to yourself, I don't sin, I'm a good person. I just don't feel like it. <laughs> Guess what? That's a sin. So the root cause, I'm going to be talking about root causes. Uh, you're willing to pay the wrong price. That And I'm going to give you another acronym for price that you will hopefully pay that price. But this is the wrong price. These are root causes of laziness and procrastination. Lazy and people and procrastinators are self-focused and they don't want to pay the price. P, they don't want to pay the price because P, they're perfectionists. Their issue is they might get frustrated. 
They get frustrated with their skill. They might be frustrated because of their, they don't have the uh, intellect to finish. Uh, they just want everything to be perfect. So that's the P in price. Procrastinator or perfectionist. Pro procrastinators and lazy people, rejection. They work on rejection. Uh, when rejected, they carry resentment. They feel like they're not good enough. They feel like if they don't do it, they're getting embarrassed. And that runs into avoidance. And I, they have identity problems. They have self-doubt. They're insecure. They uh, uh, have no clear purpose and they have learned helplessness. That's really a big strong hold, hold learn helplessness. You feel like you can't, you've been taught how to be a victim, pretty much what that is. Um, we've got to break that cycle of learned helplessness. Our identity is not helpless helpless because we have a helper in the Holy Spirit. And then chronic fear, uh, anxiety, failure, success. You feel, you you're, you're fear of failure and you feel succeeding. And so now you're stuck. Um, chronic fear is, a, is a, a problem that procrastinators and lazy people face. And then energy, of course. You, you're bored, you have mood swings, you feel depressed, you have distraction and burnout. All of these things are the price that you're paying to stay in this sin. You're actually paying these, this price. Instead of not paying the price or finding another price to pay, we decide consciously or not consciously to let our fear run us, to let the, our, the rejection run us, to let a perfectionist, whatever it is that we are allowing to run us, it's our choice. So these are some root causes of laziness and procrastination. This is the price you paid for being lazy. Can you imagine? Um, you have to remember when you're looking at root causes, you got to ask yourself, why is this happening? Why is this happening? What is happening to me? You know, kids are like, why, 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 why? Don't just stop with, I'm lazy. Uh, I don't feel like doing it. And then stopping there. Why don't I feel like doing it? Because I, I, I just don't feel like it. Well, why don't you feel like it? Because I need rest. Well, why do you need rest? Well, because I didn't sleep last night. Well, why didn't you sleep last night? Because I was up late doing something that I procrastinated doing. Well, there is your problem. Procrastination. So how do you fix this problem? This is a scripture in Haggai uh, 1, 1 through 11. And I kind of broke it up to kind of get you to understand you don't want to get caught in this cycle. The first paragraph talks about King Darius. And this is what the Lord of hosts is saying. These people say that the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. This is the sign of a procrastinator as it relates to the Lord, by the way. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai, the prophet. It is time for you yourselves to dwell in your panel houses while this house is in ruin. So now he's setting them up. It's time for you to do something for me. And what you're doing is something for you. Here's that selfishness. Now the Lord says, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. This is the way that you will receive as being a procrastinator and lazy. Consider this. You have sown much and harvested little. This is going to be part of this curse, guys, of being lazy. You're going to give and give and give and you ain't going to get nothing back. You eat, but you never have enough. Remember, you're never satisfied. You drink, but you never get full. You clothe yourself, but you're never warm. And he wait and he who wages wait, uh, earn wages does so and put it in bag with holes. Now that is what a procrastinator looks like. They never get ahead. And every time they try, nothing happens. This is why God is saying, consider your ways, procrastinator. And then he says it again. The Lord of hosts says, consider your ways. Go up the hills and bring wood and build the house but I may take pleasure in it and that I may be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much and behold, it comes for little. Uh, there's another warning. 
And you, and when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, declares the Lord of hosts, because my house lies in ruins. Why, you each busy yourself with his own thing. This is why laziness is a sin, because God has called us to build his house, to build his kingdom. And while we're sitting here doing our own stuff, trying to get our own ways, we're wondering why we can't get ahead. Well, he tells you in scripture, consider your ways. This is what's going to happen, lazy person. This is what's going to happen, procrastinator. But we don't really care because we want what we want because we're in the death cycle. Therefore, he says, the heaven above, above you have withheld dew and the earth has withheld its produce. And I have called a drought on the land and the hills and the grain and the new wine. The, I mean, he's called you everything to dry out. Do you feel like that? Procrastinators don't answer it. That you just feel like everything's against you because you're stuck. Don't get caught in this cycle because this is the word of the Lord. This is what he's saying to consider. If you don't take care of his house and you're just so worried about your house, this, this is going to be your outcome. Okay. So let me give you one more example of discipline that you're going to follow in this death cycle. Um, and I'm going to use Luke 14, 16 through 17 for this particular example. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servants to supper at supper time to say to them uh, that uh, were bidden, come for all things are now ready. That's going to be important now ready because remember procrastinators don't prepare for anything. So now ready and uh, they will, and they, and they with all one consent began to make excuses. God tells you to do something now. I'm ready for you to arise. Procrastinators go into this death cycle because the first thing they want to do is make an excuse. And so Luke 14, 16 through, through 24 shows that delay leads to denial. And that the acronym is IRS. You're going to have to pay up something, IRS, invitation. So I'm not going to read all the text, but I'm getting the IRS uh, pattern from Luke 14, 16 through 24. First thing, the I, God sent an invitation to come. Now should be, uh, now should have been accepted, but they make excuses. God says, come. God says, you're healed. God says, whatever he has said to you. And all you do is like, I'm not healed. I'm still broken. I'm not whole. We make all these excuses. The invitation for freedom is here. But for us, this is why you make excuses. The first one is you have to see it. You make excuses because of their property, their area. They said, let me go back and, and fix my property. Let me go back and watch my area. You have to see it uh, in order to believe it. And then it says you have to try it. They made excuses because they're possessions. Your appetites make you not accept God's invitation. First, you want to see it. First, then you want to possess it. And then you want to people, please. You have to have it. They make excuses because of people. Arrogance makes people not come. You're arrogant to say that you can't do the thing that God's called you because of arrogance. Christ is, is laying out a table, inviting you to a table and you reject it. And so therefore you deny and you delay due to your flesh. These are, the invitation is denied strictly before fleshly reasons. Is that why you're not doing it? Because of your flesh. Hold on, he gives you another reason. The R, rejection. The rejection of the interpretation. Delayed um, uh, delayed acceptance. They, they say not now, okay? So when you look at the delayed acceptance, you're actually rejecting God. God says, come into my presence. And you say, no, not yet. I'm, I'm not ready to come eat with you. So they reject the access. And it says in that text, to go out to the poor, the disabled, and the blind. And so all of these people rejected him. They rejected their access. So guess what? 
you're going to end up poor, disabled, and blind when you reject God because he's calling you to, to, to have this access, but because of your poor mindset, because of your dis disability to, to do things, because you're blind to see in the spirit realm, you're going to reject God because you're still not seeing the way God wants you to see. So the truth was rejected. He says, go into the street, the lanes, and the city. So truth, straight, street is, is representative of truth. So the path of life was rejected. Um, these people not only rejected their access, they rejected their path of access. And then it says travelers on the highways. They say, go to the highways and hedges. They were too busy moving around. They were too busy doing their own thing. So their access was hidden. They're running this place, running this place. These are all reasons. The second reason that this text says that they uh, rejected the offer. So it was denial. They were delayed due to spiritual blockages. All of these are spiritual blockages. If, uh, if you are in this category, this is, if it's not your flesh, it's your spirit. And that leads to S. This is what God says to you, starvation. That's the S. Because they declined the, inv the invitation, they will have no access. You will be denied. Because you denied Christ, he's going to deny you. Because you don't want to build the kingdom, he's going to deny you from the kingdom. Because you don't want to come into the kingdom. You want to do your own house. You want to build your own house, not his. What they refuse to eat in life, they will de be denied access and death. What the poor, disabled, and blind rejected in life will be denied access in, the, in their death. And what they believed in life uh, will be revealed in their death. Truth will not be denied. You will learn the truth. And so now the table's flipped. Now God's rejecting you and you're denied access to the table. The, the, so delay leads to denial. Your delay is actually leading to God's denial. So don't die from starvation. Don't die because you don't want to eat at God's table. Don't die because you want to build your own house. You want to build your own thing. You want to do what you want to do and you don't want to do what God wants to do. And so this is another example about being ready now based on that Luke 14. And this is the story of the 10 virgins. You got to be ready. This is a, a kind of a, the two ways. You're either going to practice avoidance or you're going to practice acceptance. You have five virgins that practice avoidance. They were procrastinators. And you had five that accepted. They had discipline. Procrastinators have no discipline. They're foolish. They walk in the darkness. They have no oil in their lamps. They have no light. They will uh, take from others. They're not prepared to wait, but they will sleep. They get ready based on convenience. <laughs> they have no extra oil. They have no refreshing. Um, their natural resources dry up. They bu they're busy when they should be, when they shouldn't be. And they're not ready when they're called. So therefore they have no access. Does that sound like you procrastinator? This is acceptance. This is what you want to move towards. You want to be wise. You want to walk in wisdom. You want to have oil in your lamp. You want to show his light. We'll direct others. Uh, prepare to rest and wait. There's a good time to rest. There's a good time for wait. That's a good thing to do. Be ready based on covenant problems. It's not being ready based on convenience. It's being ready because you've made a covenant with God and he's made a covenant with you. You have extra oil. That way you can be refreshed and your spiritual source will not run out because the Holy Spirit will be there to, to continue to fill you and fill you and fill you. You know, you will have so much energy when you work for God. You know, everybody says to me, how do you get so much done? He continues to fill me. I mean, I, I, I was crazy. I was up to one o'clock working on my paps for, for my meetings today. And I woke up at, I had four hours of sleep. And I'm like, dude, can I sleep? And he's like, no, get up. You got some more work to do. I'm like, okay. And, and I had four hours of sleep and I don't feel like I'm deprived. He woke me up. I got up and did what I was supposed to do. 
I stayed in bed and did it, but I was in bed working and doing what he was telling me to do. It was crazy. Busy when you should be. And then when you should be is when he's telling you to be busy. When he tells me to sleep, I'll sleep for a week. But when he tells me to be busy, I won't sleep for a week. Be ready when he's called and you have access. So this is how you break out. You break out by accepting the discipline. You break out by doing what the wise virgins did. Pre be prepared. Be willing to help others. Be willing to be light. Be willing to understand that you need spiritual resource. Be willing to accept it now. Be ready to move now. Get ready to move in the things of God now. Don't wait. Your first thing to do when, when you have something to do, don't say, I'm a wait. Say, I'm doing it now. I'm ready. Be ready to move. To break out the cycle, you have to be ready to move. For you, the only word you have is now. Now, now do it. Now, now I get it done. Now is the time. The breakout of the cycle, ap apply discipline now with diligence. You have to be diligent in your work. You can't do everything at once. Write a list. I'm going to show you. Write two things down. Do two things in parallel. Stagger them. Do a time box. So you're going to do this for or one, one hour and you're going to do this for another. You make your time so that you make sure that what you're doing is within your allocated time. So this is the price you want to pay. How to break out the cycle, being disciplined, dedicated, and diligent. So practice the cost, practical costs to consider. This is the price. Practical, practice self-compassion. Love yourself. Uh, love ourselves enough to move. Love yourself enough to face the challenge. Love yourself to, uh, enough to say, God, I'm doing this for you. Um, have self-compassion. Don't be so hard on yourself. Um, and then rotate between two tasks with a staggered deadline. That means discipline yourself. That means um, do say you're going to have your, your, your housework to do and you want to do Bible study. Do your housework for an hour. Do a Bible study for 15 minutes. Do a housework for 15 minutes or, or 30 minutes. Do a Bible study or, or do the next thing for, for an hour. Stagger it so that you are actually getting stuff done in the time. Rotate between the two tasks so you're not bored. No one wants to clean a house for eight hours. So break it up. Make one week, uh, a week you do your bathrooms, another week you do your floors. Stagger the time so that you can still get through stuff done and then rotate it on a consistent pattern. Identify root cause issues. If you're going to pay this price, find out what the problem is. Are you dealing with perfectionism? Are you dealing with rejection? Are you dealing with identity issues, fear or lack of energy? Deal with it. Find out what the root cause of your Procrastination is don't just say, oh, this is the way I am. I'm meant to be lazy. No, you're not. You have the power of the living God in you. You're not built to be lazy. You're built for breakthrough. That's what you really have to understand. Challenge your false belief systems, your strongholds, your triggers, your traps. They have to be destroyed. Whatever fears you have, whatever you have in your identity that's tied to a stronghold, you must destroy what's trying to destroy you. And that's, that's going to require you to do some work. And yes, it'll take time. It took you time to get in a ditch. Why are you only going to give God five minutes to get out of it? It's going to take time because your mindset's going to take a slow time to change. And then engage your strengths and, uh, and your stresses. You have to understand when you're stressed, push into it. Find out why you're stressed. Find out why you're feeling this way. Don't back off. Oh, I'm stressed. I'm quitting. Well, why are you stressed? We have to lean into it so that these things are not stress stressors. And then you have some strengths that you can kind of engage and lean into so that you can get it done. When we pay the cost, Christ actually pays the price. So we get the credit. Think about that. When we're willing to pay the price, pay the cost, when we consider the cost, Christ is the one that pays the price because he died for us. And because he died and we considered the cost, 
He puts it on our credit. We now have access. We now have extra. That's how we get extra time. This is how we get extra energy because God pays the price so that he can credit us with everything that we need to finish. He says, I will be the one that will uh, that will perfect you. I will be the one. When you're weak, I'm going to make you strong. He's giving you credit by paying the price. We just have to be willing to be practical in the price, okay? Any questions? Hopefully that helps. It'll be second half to next week to, to talk about how to get out, but hopefully I gave you enough to break out of the cycle. Any questions, comments, concerns? No, it's hearing none. No one's coming. Yeah, out. like I just want to repent, you know? Like, I mean, that's what I've been like. Like, I'm over here just like my heart's so broken because he's given me so much. Like, he has blessed me so abundantly. He's blessed me with dishes and I complain because I don't feel like doing them he's blessed me and given me the privilege of being in school but I've had an F so many times because I don't want to do it and I whenever you were on the Haggai page like the conviction of the Holy Spirit came on me so I just want to pray I just I want to repent because I don't want to grieve him and I have and he's so kind and he's so full of grace and so full of mercy that even though I'm sitting here doing these things he still gives and he's still like it's okay move forward and so I just feel really led to pray if that's okay So, Heavenly Father, I just release your spirit of peace right now, God. I release your spirit of peace and your hedge of protection and your shed blood over all of us. So, Heavenly Father, I just come to you now and I just, I repent. I repent of laziness and of procrastination. I repent of being selfish, Father. Yes, God. Forgive me for being Forgive selfish. me of self and selfishness yes. because that's not from you. So, Heavenly Father, I just come to you now and with the least amount of resistance, Heavenly Father, I ask that you utterly, utterly teach me discipline yes. because that self-control is a fruit of, the, fruit of the Spirit. And Heavenly Father, it is so bad to the point, and I have to confess my sins, that I don't even get in your words sometimes because I just lay there. And Heavenly Father... Every day I tell you, I'm sorry I'm this way. I'm sorry I'm this way. And it's every day because I feel your Holy Spirit's tug and I hear your voice saying, come to me. And I don't listen because I'm lazy. And it's not even about procrastinating. It's just that I don't want to do it. So Heavenly Father, forgive me of that rebellion. Forgive me of disobedience. <laughs> And so, Heavenly Father, I I utterly cut off procrastination. I utterly cut off laziness, and I cast it into the pit of fire where it came from, Heavenly Father. God, I fill those empty places with your Holy Spirit's power. With, with self-control and discipline, Heavenly Father, with the least amount of resistance, God. You, you said it, your word said it. Man will not teach you. I will teach you. So, Heavenly Father, I open up myself to your teachings. I open up myself to, to what your apostle is telling us, what your, your pastor is telling us and teaching us and feeding us. I open up myself to those things. To, I open up my soul's stomach to the things of wisdom, to the things of your word, Heavenly Father, and I deny my fleshly stomach, the appetite that, that feeds my flesh and sin, and that's procrastination and laziness and not wanting to do it. Father, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me, Father. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and anybody that I have affected and offended by by being in this cycle lord i ask forgiveness from them and so heavenly father i release this to you and i accept 
I accept your grace and I accept your mercy and I accept your forgiveness and the power of your shed blood on the cross because I know it. it's nailed to the cross so that I can move forward yes, and live God. life abundantly and break out of this death cycle. Yes, God. I don't want that anymore. That's the old man, Heavenly Father. I just want you, Jesus. And so I open myself to you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Anyone else have anything? Thank you for that, Cassie. Hopefully you sewed into that prayer of hers. I did. Amen. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for who you are and for uh, your grace. For what we can't do, Father, you can do it. Make us the ten, the five wise virgins. Make us wise to be ready for when the bridegrooms come. Make us ready so that we will build your house and not continue yes. to build our own house. Because we do love you. We do honor you. Um, because there's no one else that does the things that you do to us and for us. We love you. We honor and praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I will wrap this up and send you out the notes and see you next week or Friday, whichever comes first. Thank, Thank you. All Thank right. you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow.